In this little tutorial, I would like to share with you um, something I will call a cookie cutter effect in Photoshop. So as you see before you is this butterfly that is filled with a beautiful pattern from William Morris, um, a wonderful uh, poet and artist and wallpaper designer from the 1800s. So how did I create this? How can I create a shape and then fill it with my own beautiful textures that I like? Well, that's what I'm going to show you. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to have is your toolbar out, of course, on your um, left-hand side, <laughs> and then two panels. One panel will be the Layers panel, and the other will be the properties. Now, if you don't have those panels out, you just go to window and all your panels are in there. So there is layers and I go down, it's alphabetical and I find, wait a minute, where's properties? <laughs> there it is, there's properties, okay? All right, so I have them hooked up here in the little mini panel style on the right hand side and I can just click them and open them as I need them for this little um, cookie cutter effect that I, I think is just so cool. All right, so here we go. How do I do this? Okay, I'm going to take this off. Here we go. And I have a couple different just fun patterns and things um, that I found that I placed in here. Um, now, you can just have one or you can have many, whatever you want to do. You can create a whole collage if you want to. And then once you have your pattern that you like, um, pattern, texture, it could be a photo, it could be whatever your heart desires. <laughs> Get it in there. Um, and then we'll create a shape. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get a shape from the toolbar. And if I click and hold, I'm going to go to custom shape. And then I had already selected a butterfly. Um, it was within the nature folder. Let's see, within the legacy folder. Um, and you can find whatever you want. Um, for yours. There's lots of different shapes in here that you can go up and select. Okay, so I'm starting with a butterfly. And let's see here. I'm going to go on the top in the options bar and just click where the width and the height is. Click the little link there. Make sure it's um, dark or select it so that it constrains the proportions as I pull it out. And if, if you don't want to do that, just hold down shift and shift will um, also constrain proportions. So, oh no, it's not, it's not doing it. Why is that? <laughs> okay. I'm going to hold down shift. Good lesson for you. If it's not constraining the portion proportions and it's distorting the image, then just hold down shift. There you go. I personally think that Every Photoshop artist should know about the shift key for constraining proportions because <laughs> every year they seem to change where and how to constrain them, but shift always works. Okay. So there we go. Now I have, um, a shape out. Now, if you look at the properties panel, it says that my fill is white and my stroke is set to none. You can fill it with whatever you want. Um, uh, I'm going to use white in this case um, because what it'll do later is it'll make the background whatever color you select. So I'm going to pick white. And let's see. Then I'm going to open up the Layers panel. Click. And now the Layers panel is open. My butterfly shape is selected. And 
then all I have to do is, okay, so I see it there. If I, I'm just going to take a moment to look. And you can see that shapes are vector patterns. They're created with vectors um, opposed to roster. Um, if Anyway, so, okay, so then I'm going to go to properties, open up the properties, and while the butterfly is selected, you can see the blue bounding box around it. If you don't have it selected, go back and make sure to select it. Um, you could go into your move tool here on the toolbar at the top and then select it and make sure that it's outlined. Then go to the properties panel and you're going to want to make sure this panel is open until you see this pathfinder. It might even be closed with an arrow, so make sure to open it up so you see the pathfinder and these little shapes here. So the pathfinder will allow me to do things like merge shapes and um, interact two shapes together and all different things here. I mean, I can hold my arrow over it. And I can see this one says combine shapes. This one says subtract front shape, intersect shape areas and exclude. Well, I only have one shape here and I'm going to use it like a cookie cutter. So I'm going to try the subtract front shape and sure enough, that works. It cut it out, um, or it appears like it cut out the paper beneath it. It really just covered it, but it gave you this wonderful cookie cutter effect. <laughs> um, now that's not a professional term used by Adobe. It's a fun term and I like it. <laughs> so there we go, the cookie cutter effect. Now, once it's made, I can go back to my layers underneath, like here's my pattern. I don't know, that's my William Morris pattern. I'll type in there, pattern one. And then I have a whole bunch of other patterns, but I can go in there, go to my move tool, and then, um, oh, for some reason it went up there. So I'm gonna go to pattern one. I'll hit um, control T for transform. There we go. Now, there we go. Now I can hold it and pull it around. Um, and I can move the pattern to where I like it. Um, you can kind of see there's a pattern underneath there on my other layers. Ooh, I could do something like that and have colorful pattern in uh, the top, different from the bottom. Um, and I could take the eye or view off of that layer, that layer and try different things. Um, I could play around with all the different layers. I can do all kinds of things. So I can either play around with the bottom layers or I can go back to the top um, layer and also move it around to how I like. So there you go. That's the cookie cutter effect. I'm going to do one more thing. Um, once I have this, I could do something really cool, like I could go ahead and since it is a layer, I could go to the layer menu and go to a layer style. And I'll just pick blending options first and pull it up here. It opens up this panel and I could do things like bevel and boss. Let's check it out. And let's see if I have to click on the bevel emboss here to actually activate the panel. And see how it's it's embossing it? And it's giving it like a shadow. Um, I could, well now if I did a drop shadow, it would only do the drop shadow on the inside, really. Um, and, oh my gosh, I can do so many different things here. And I don't want to do all of them, <laughs> but I'm going to leave that up to you. If that's just a little extra bonus thing that you could do, um, you could also go ahead and move this down and merge it down 
with the pattern that you like, and then you could play with it in so many other ways. All right. So at least I got you to the cookie cutter effect. Have fun. Make some really cool filled objects. Um, you can use the custom um, shapes or basic shapes to do that. Or you could even make your own shape with the pen tool or whatever you so desire. Okay, well, have fun.